Connecting Classrooms is a global uh, education programme which focuses on schools, schools in the UK and schools here in Zambia. And it's designed to give young people in Zambia and in the UK the skills required in a globalised world. Skills, knowledge and understanding. And we do that through the teachers, giving them these skills that are required in, in a modern, globalised environment. And also connecting them, so that's why the word connecting classrooms really says it all for me. Connecting classrooms is a, a platform through which uh, leaders, teachers, including pupils, find ways of uh, acquiring needed core skills that can help them during the day-to-day -day work. Connecting classrooms is very important in that it has taught us a number of things. Among those things, I can say it has opened our mind to be critical thinkers. We partnered 150 schools in the UK with schools in Zambia. And those partnerships is where we connect through the teachers, working on their collaborative projects. And that's a very enriching and very important cultural experience for them. It's opened many of them to new ideas. And many of them have said to me personally that they found it a life-changing experience. We went, uh, the 10 of us as teachers, we were in uh, UK for 10 days. And while we were there, we had to undergo all the daily routines that take place usually. Teaching, you go, you are there also part of the teaching in certain classrooms with our colleagues in UK. It was the first time to, to fly and uh, it was amazing, though it was a long flight. It was uh, uh, a change of environment altogether here in Africa and, and on the other side. So it was really a great experience for me. Our experience in UK was so nice, was so wonderful when we were told that we'd be going to UK. At first we didn't believe. It was so awesome, it was fantastic. We had a nice trip up to London from there. They came to pick us from London and then we went to Swansea. Uh, we are there for 12 days, but for us, the special unity class, we are so busy from day one up to the last day. It is very important in, in that um, when we connect to other classes, uh, classrooms or to other countries, we learn a lot of cultures, different cultures. Even them, when they come here, they learn a lot of things on how we handle our children. It's very important for a Zambian teacher to see a different environment. You know, when, when you don't travel, uh, you might think that you are in the best world. Okay, if you allow me to use uh, a Bemba uh, word which says umwana shenda atasha nyinakunaya, meaning a child who doesn't travel would always praise the mother that she's the best cook because the child has never tasted any other food elsewhere. The CPD, which is a continuous development professional, it's very important because as you interact with people, you get to learn new ideas and skills, and those skills will keep you going. The way Connecting Classrooms works is that the, the schools that we partner with the UK and in Zambia work on a collaborative project, which they do together and they can select from any of the SDG goals and the school in Siavonga and the schools in Swansea in Wales in the UK um, selected to work on the SDG goal around clean water and the environment and the reason they did that is because Siavonga is on Lake Kariba um, so it's an important uh, dam for Zambia that provides clean water for, for millions of citizens in Zambia. In Swansea, they've got the rivers running into the sea, and so they, they felt a commonality there, um, that they were concerned about single-use plastics, that floating in the water, washing up on the shores, you know, lying in the streets around this school. So it's a really nice project because something that, you know, they both felt that they could do something about. The project that we chose 
Of course, working with our partners in the UK had to do with waste management, recycling, plastics, uh, reducing and reusing. So how best can we control the misuse of plastic waste in our environment? The way we handle plastic waste in Zambia, as much as I know the negative effects of plastic, after using something, I'll just throw it like that. Or burn it. Before we started the Zero Plastic Project in Siabonga, teachers had no idea whatsoever about how to manage these plastics. The plastic management here in Siabonga is not so good because people are not oriented. It hasn't come to Siavonga yet or to Zambia yet, the way we saw it in UK, that even a young person, a young girl or a young boy in school is able to eat and put in the bin. In schools, as teachers, especially the group that had gone to UK, our group, we are trying to educate the schools that we are in to say we have to reduce to reuse the plastics, not to throw them anyhow. Young people these days feel very passionately about climate change and the environment. So the schools worked together on a collaborative project and, and they did things around recycling waste. So for example, when I went to see Avonga, I saw that they were making kind of jewelry out of plastic bottles that people had just discarded that they'd picked up from the side of the lake. Uh, the teachers from Wales were also doing that with their schools in Swansea. So really nice collaborative project. In our special unit, we are getting the papers for chicken snacks, making them balls, because football, the balls that we use for football are very expensive, but we're using the same plastics to make balls for our children to use to play. Especially when it's break time. Sometime back they used to eat and throw. For them it is normal. But we, used to, we tell them now to say, uh uh, when you finish eating, get that plastic because it's important. We want to use it to make a ball that tomorrow we're going to use to play football. Children are able to take or pick the bottles which have uh, been used and they have been thrown away, or to pick them and reuse them by creating an artifact out of the, the waste that uh, we have. It's not only recycling those uh, uh, products and uh, keep them, but instead they are one way of income generating activities that we are, we are doing from those artifacts we are coming up with. We are, people are getting to appreciate the uh, products we are coming up with when we recycle them. They are able to see and some they are even now coming to start buying those products. So meaning that the sustainability is there because we, people are seeing the impact of what we are doing of those projects. One of the teachers from the school in, in Swansea took part in the visit to secondary school in, in Siobonga and she worked with the class for learners with additional needs and really saw there that there was a real need to support the teacher in Siavonga and to support the Zambian education system with some expertise. It was a really nice exchange because we were able through Connecting Classrooms programme to send a teacher from Siavonga on a study visit to the school in Wales and see how they work with their pupils with additional learning needs. We used to teach them mathematics, English and other subjects. We didn't know that our children need to learn through play. So after coming from UK now, we are implementing, now we know that for our children to learn, special children to learn, they have to learn through play a lot. They are, they are playing, but they are learning, even through a song. Yes, but before we went to UK, we would teach mathematics on the board, mark them, teach English on the board, mark them, teach the other subjects. We used to do a lot of academic ways. We observed lessons, the, how they teach. We learned how they do their daily routine, their lesson planning, their curriculum. We didn't know that our children, they need physio. Yes, that's the period for physiotherapy, just relaxing their muscles. But when we came back from UK, we've also introduced that corner, just that period for physiotherapy at least to relax their muscles so that they can learn well. All those, we learned them from UK, and that was so fantastic. 
There are a lot of things that need to be improved, in fact, yeah, for us to, to handle these children. Even our mindset, even us as teachers, and especially the parents, parents have neglected these children. It is now that we have opened a unit here in Siabonga that people are coming on board to say, we have these children. There's a stigma in society around people with uh, additional needs. And uh, the, you know, the school system really can't cope with that in many places. Uh, they don't have the expertise and, and the resources, but sometimes it can be a very simple thing. It doesn't need to require a lot of money necessarily. It's about the teaching expertise, about the pedagogy. And I think that's what really came away from that visit, was that just by making some changes in, in the school, um, in the way that uh, teachers even in the, in the other classes, the way that teachers uh, respond to pupils with additional learning has been very valuable. Parents have that mentality to say because they are disabled, they are not entitled to school. It's like it was a mistake or a taboo to give birth to such a child. Hence, keep them at home. So I feel there's too much work that we need to do in the sensitization of these disabled children, especially to the parents. Even the love, they don't give them the love that we give them at school. Our children love to be in school. When they come to school, they get that love that we give them. So we need to sensitize them, to love them, and to make them accept them that they are, they are also human beings and they are also entitled to be in school. The situation is different now because at least they, they, they learned some skills on, on how to manage situation there uh, to the extent of sensitizing more communities. As a result, uh, parents are now also bringing children. Those who are hiding their children are now bringing them to the school because they know now that there's this uh, benefit as a result of the exposure that was given to our Zambian teachers.